In our last video, I showed you how add-ons work for formidable forms. In this one, I'm going to show you how to actually install and configure one. We're going to install and configure the directory plugin. Uh, however, we also are going to want the Stripe add-on because one of the options for this directory is to have paid submissions. So I'm going to come down here and grab Stripe real quick first. Now it says it's active and then we'll come up here and do the directory. And the next thing that comes up is that we need to install and activate some additional add-ons. And then here we can choose what kind of directory we want. There's a team directory and it can be two column or four column, a user or member directory, and then also a business directory. I'm going to choose business directory. And it wants to create two pages for us. One has a form for adding a listing. And one is the actual directory where you can see the listings. So I'm going to create those pages just by clicking create now. Then it says you can customize your new pages. So here's that directory. And it shows that there are two entries automatically put in for us. There's a search and uh, an alphabet search across the top. But I want to go right now to the plugins page and show you what happened when we did that. There's the formidable directory and there's the formidable registration, which makes a user out of the person that filled out the form. And then there's formidable stripe. I'm going to click activate on that. And now before we start doing a directory, we want to configure Stripe. So we go to Forms, Global Settings, and here's a Stripe link. Now, I've already connected my test version. I've not connected live because I don't, I don't want to be live for this demonstration. But this works just like connecting uh, Twitter to your site or Facebook to your site or anything like that. If you click this button, it asks you to log in and it says, do you approve this website having access? You say yes. And it comes right back here. Now I could hit disconnect and, and not be connected to Stripe anymore if I wanted. There's also uh, another option here, process one-time payments either before the entry is created or after the entry is created. And you get to choose. And it, it's a kind of, a, it's more of a business decision than a technological one. Uh, if you don't want them listed until the e-commerce transaction is completed, then you would want before entry is created. If you want to go ahead and just create the entry and then do a Stripe transaction, then you would want this one. Note here it says select if your site is using conditional logic on the payment form action or PHP customizations to set the price. If a form has multiple payment form actions, choose this option because you can also choose PayPal and give people the option of either Stripe or PayPal. We're going to do just Stripe. You'll note that there's also a new directory global settings area. And this is where you could create another directory if you wanted. But for now, let's go to forms. And you'll see that the business directory form is already created for us. Let's edit it. And it uses pagination, which you can see here from page one. And there's a business name, and it's actually grabbing the meta key from company, which is someplace else in this form. Here's a place to upload the logo, photos website, phone, address, normal business stuff, information, social links, account information. So this would be for your, your WordPress account. And then here is the e-commerce section. By default, this form requires someone to pay to get listed. If you simply remove these forms, that requirement goes away. So you don't have to do anything to say, I don't want to pay. You just take out the section where they're required to pay. And you can see here they have the choice of credit card or PayPal. Uh, that will appear slightly different on the form on the front end because we actually only installed Stripe. Right here is the Stripe payment method. And 
we need this to use Stripe. And then there's payment status, which is hidden, um, but includes the what happens after the transaction is complete. And then there's a summary. So this will show everything that was entered up here before they hit submit. We're going to take a look at the settings real quick before we go test the form. Normal settings, there's the form title and key, the short code, the messages, AJAX. This is where they set up pagination, and this is really nice because it's quite a long form. So they just gave a good label to each pagination option. And then there's our messages, actions and notifications. Here's one to collect a payment. And you can see that one's over here. If we go to collect a payment, then you can put in a description. You can put in how much it costs. Payment type is recurring. Repeat once a month. Option for a trial period. Currency is US dollars. So we connected to Stripe in the global settings, but we get to specify transaction information here in the settings under actions and notifications. These are setting fields that Stripe wants. And so this is what you can send back to Stripe. I'm going to close this one. Payment success email gets sent on the success of payment, not form submission. Here's PayPal, which I'm going to turn off because we did not install the PayPal module. And then there's register user. So this actually takes information from the form and creates a WordPress user. And this is just taking uh, information from the form itself. Here's the company and here's that meta field that we were looking for. Form permissions are just the same as everything else. Form scheduling, styling and buttons, customize HTML. This is all the normal default stuff from our other forms that we looked at. We were gonna, we're gonna look at views in a little bit. Now we wanna view the form, but it created a page for us. So we're going to go over to pages and you'll see that add a listing and directory are both in draft. I'm going to publish both of those. And now we'll view add a listing. And here's that great pagination that they created. And we'll put in a business name, Topher's business, upload a picture. And then some other pictures. We'll put in a website. There's my phone number, my address, information. And then we'll click next. Social links. We'll put in twitter.com and we'll leave it at that. Account information. So uh, we're going to create an account for me. I need to put in a password. And then an email address. We'll click next. And now we'll do payment. I'm going to do credit card. And I'm going to use the credit or the Stripe test number. Uh, with this number, you can use any future date and any CVC. And then we get to review. So there's my logo. Here are my screenshots. These are all pictures from WordCamp Europe in Germany this last year. And there's all of that. And we can add our listing for $99 a month. Submit listing. There we go. Now this form chose to reprint the form in addition to the success information. So if you were adding a whole bunch of listings over and over again, you could just start right in on a new one. So in our next video, we're going to take a look at what happened to this submission once we did it and what you can do with it.